Musical form, Wikipedia article audio. The term musical form refers to the overall structure or plan of a piece of music, it describes the layout of a composition as divided into sections. In the 10th edition of the Oxford Companion to Music, Percy Scholes defines musical form as a series of strategies designed to find a successful mean between the opposite extremes of unrelieved repetition and unrelieved alteration. Levels of Organization Passage Notation Pieces Cycle Single forms Sectional form Strophic form Medley or chain form Binary form Ternary form Rondo form Variational form Developmental form Sonata Allegro form Escaping the formalist trap Cyclical forms According to Richard Middleton, musical form is the shape or structure of the work. He describes it through difference, the distance moved from a repeat, the latter being the smallest difference. Difference is quantitative and qualitative, how far, and of what type, different. In many cases, form depends on statement and restatement, unity and variety, and contrast and connection. The founding level of musical form can be divided into two parts. The smallest level of construction concerns the way musical phrases are organized into musical sentences and paragraphs such as the verse of a song. This may be compared to, and is often decided by, the verse form or meter of the words or the steps of a dance. For example, the 12 bar blues is a specific verse form, while common meter is found in many hymns and ballads and, again, the Elizabethan galliard, like many dances, requires a certain rhythm, pace and length of melody to fit its repeating pattern of steps. Simpler styles of music may be more or less wholly defined at this level of form, which therefore does not differ greatly from the loose sense first mentioned and which may carry with it rhythmic, harmonic, timbral, occasional and melodic conventions. In the analysis of musical form, any components that can be defined on the time axis are conventionally designated by letters. Uppercase letters are used for the most fundamental, while lowercase letters are used for subdivisions. If one such section returns in a varied or modified form, a numerical digit or an appropriate number of prime symbols appears after the letter. Even at this simplest level, there are patterns that may be reused on larger time scales. For example, consider the analogy with rhyme schemes. The following verse is composed of two differently rhymed couplets, and thus its organization is binary or twofold. Contrast with the following verse, where the rhyme is repeated in the second line, followed by a variant in the third line two half lines sharing a new rhyme and a return to the first arrangement in the last line, and thus its organization is song form. Ternary form or threefold is. However, as music educator Stuart McPherson stated, there is a preference at all levels of musical organization for groupings of two, four, eight over other divisions so that even a ternary form is often extended by repetition of the first subject into a fourfold structure so that composers must guard against excessive squareness. The next level concerns the entire structure of any single self-contained musical piece. If the hymn, ballad, blues, or dance alluded to above simply repeats the same musical material indefinitely then the piece is said to be in strophic form overall. If it repeats with distinct, sustained changes each time, for instance in setting, ornamentation, or instrumentation, 
then the piece is a theme and variations. If two distinctly different themes are alternated indefinitely, as in a song alternating verse and chorus or in the alternating slow and fast sections of the Hungarian Chardash, then this gives rise to a simple binary form. If the theme is played, then a new theme is introduced, the piece then closing with a return to the first theme, we have a simple ternary form. Great arguments and misunderstanding can be generated by such terms as ternary and binary, as a complex piece may have elements of both at different organizational levels. A minuet, like any Baroque dance, generally had simple binary structure, however, this was frequently extended by the introduction of another minuet arranged for solo instruments, after which the first was repeated again and the piece ended this is a ternary form ABBA, the piece is binary on the lower compositional level but ternary on the higher. Organizational levels are not clearly and universally defined in Western musicology, while words like section and passage are used at different levels by different scholars whose definitions, as School Anchor points out, cannot keep pace with the myriad innovations and variations devised by musicians. The grandest level of organization may be referred to as cyclical form. It concerns the arrangement of several self-contained pieces into a large-scale composition. For example, a set of songs with a related theme may be presented as a song cycle, whereas a set of Baroque dances were presented as a suite. The opera and ballet may organize song and dance into even larger forms. This level of musical form, though it again applies and gives rise to different genres, takes more account of the methods of musical organization used. For example, a symphony, a concerto, and a sonata differ in scale and aim, yet generally resemble one another in the manner of their organization. The individual pieces which make up the larger form may be called movements. Scholz suggested that European classical music had only six stand-alone forms, simple binary, simple ternary, compound binary, rondo, air with variations, and fugue. Charles Keel classified forms and formal detail as sectional, developmental, or variational. This form is built from a sequence of clear-cut units that may be referred to by letters but also often have generic names such as introduction and coda, exposition, development and recapitulation, verse, chorus or refrain, and bridge. Sectional forms include Medley, potpourri, or chain form is the extreme opposite, that of unrelieved variation, it is simply an indefinite sequence of self-contained sections, sometimes with repeats. This form uses two sections, each often repeated. In 18th century Western classical music, simple binary form was often used for dances and carried with it the convention that the two sections should be in different musical keys but the same rhythm and duration. This form has three parts. In Western classical music a simple ternary form has a third section that is a recapitulation of the first. Often, the first section is repeated. This approach was called de capo form. Later, it gave rise to the 32-bar song, with the B section then often referred to as the middle eight. This form has a recurring theme alternating with different sections called episodes. It may be asymmetrical or symmetrical. A recurring section, especially the main theme, is sometimes more thoroughly varied, or else one episode may be a development of it. A similar arrangement is the ritornello form of the Baroque Concerto Grosso. Arch form resembles a symmetrical rondo without intermediate repetitions of the main theme. Variational forms are those in which variation is an important formative element. Theme and variations, a theme, 
which in itself can be of any shorter form, forms the only section and is repeated indefinitely but is varied each time, so as to make a sort of sectional chain form. An important variant of this, much used in 17th century British music and in the Passacaglia and Chacon, was that of the ground bass a repeating bass theme or basso ostinato over and around which the rest of the structure unfolds, often, but not always, spinning polyphonic or contrapuntal threads, or improvising divisions and descants. This is said by Scholz to be the form par excellence of unaccompanied or accompanied solo instrumental music. The rondo is often found with sections varied or by far the most important in Western classical music is this form, also known as sonata form, first movement form, compound binary, ternary and a variety of other names, developed from the binary formed dance movement described above but is almost always cast in a greater ternary form having the nominal subdivisions of exposition, development and recapitulation. Usually, but not always, the A parts may be subdivided into two or three themes or theme groups which are taken asunder and recombined to form the B part thus e.g. A1 of 1 plus coda. Middleton, following Andrew Chester and Charles Keel suggests that forms in the context of popular music may be characterized on the one hand as syntactic, embodied, extensional, which are produced by starting with small components rhythmic or melodic motifs, perhaps and then developing these through techniques of modification and combination, or on the other as processual, engendered, intentional music, which starts with a framework a chord sequence, a melodic outline, a rhythmic pattern and then extends itself by repeating the framework with perpetually varied inflections to the details filling it in. In the 13th century the song cycle emerged, which is a set of related songs. The oratorio took shape in the second half of the 16th century as a narrative recounted rather than acted by the singers. The arrangement of the pulse into unaccented and accented beats, the cells of a measure that, when harmonized, may give rise to a motif or figure, the further organization of such a measure, by repetition and variation, into a true musical phrase having a definite rhythm and duration that may be implied in melody and harmony, defined, for example, by a long final note and a breathing space. This phrase may be regarded as the fundamental unit of musical form it may be broken down into measures of two or three beats, but its distinctive nature will then be lost. Even at this level, the importance of the principles of repetition and contrast, weak and strong, climax and repose, can be seen. Thus, form may be understood on three levels of organization. For the purpose of this exposition, these levels can be roughly designated as passage, piece, and cycle.